Gullah means that you are a descendant of West Africans who were enslaved here in the Sea Islands, going all the way up from North Carolina all the way down to Florida, but primarily in our South Carolina Sea Islands. They were brought from the coast of West Africa to the low country and enslaved in order to do the labor of the plantations that helped to build America. It's the blending of all of those cultures that came together during the transatlantic slave trade that gave birth to this culture called Gullah. Gullah is the most authentic African culture in America. We think Gullah came from the word Gola. The Gola tribe were rice-growing people in West Africa, and they were brought over to develop rice fields. One of the major reasons why we were selected from the west coast of Africa, especially those rice-producing countries like Sierra Leone, Senegal, Gambia, Angola, the rice coast, was because of our expertise in rice cultivation. We came here with specialized skills, and so we were assigned specific tasks. And if we completed those tasks, let's say by noon, then we had the rest of the day, quote unquote, as free time. They were pretty much left alone certain times in the year. And so they were able to really practice the African way of life. And so it has sustained itself over the last 100, 150 years. And so that's why you still see Gullah so prevalent in these areas as opposed to maybe in the upper state or other parts of the country. Negro spirituals are really pure West African chants. And if you went back to the coast of West Africa, you'll hear those blue notes and you'll hear that sound, which was the basis for our American music, jazz, blues, spirituals, and gospel. It's the music of the ancestors, and in singing these spirituals, you, you feel their spirit. It's the music that belongs to us, so it's important that in singing these songs that we remember them. The spirituality of the Gullah people is first and foremost, and family is another aspect that is so very important to the Gullah people. Spirituality, family, food, music, and the language. Really what the Gullah Geechee language is, is it's an English-based Creole language. We can just drop one letter from a word and just change the sound all together. We would probably say, oh, we out here in the yard, okay? We wouldn't say that, we say, we're there in the yard. And you really have to know the language to know what we're saying, and, and, and that what really made, people, made us ashamed of it because people say it was broken English that we were speaking, but we were just communicating. I mean, we were talking, it was our language. And what people don't have a language. This culture is part of your culture. You cannot have the complete story of American history without South Carolina history. You cannot have South Carolina history without color history. I'm gonna clap my hand because I want to. Because I want to. I'm gonna clap my hand because I can. I'm gonna clap my hand because I want to. I'm gonna clap my hands because I can. African Americans left the South and moved to northern cities in droves. African Americans left the South and moved to northern cities in droves. Seated in a background of slavery and prejudice. Black music and art gave African Americans an identity. All this led to the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was a rebirth of African American culture during the 1920s. The revival was a cultural, social, and artistic explosion of African American identity centered in Harlem, New York. By 1925 million African Americans, 40% of African Americans living in the United States lived in these cities. This rebirth of African American culture begins with this great migration. Harlem, New York became the central capital for Northern Blacks. With a huge African American population, Harlem was the heart of this rebirth. In 1910, Harlem was an upper middle class white community, but by 1925, it was known as the Mecca of the New Negro. 
African Americans came to New York just as they did to many of the great cities of the North, seeking opportunity. Those who came to Harlem found a place where they were free for the first time to express themselves in ways that seemed inconceivable before. Many of these people had not been able to pursue their art, had not been able to pursue the opportunity to become a novelist, to become a jazz musician. It simply was not available and possible for them in the restricted caste system that they were consigned to in the South. Suddenly here in New York, finally, 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 we can be the people that we imagine ourselves to be. It would explode into one of the most artistically fertile periods in African-American history. The Harlem Renaissance represents, above all, black people really for the first time making a claim on being modern as a people. And the only reason we know about it, because we was going to, the, to A.J. Lester. And where was A.J. Lester? 125th. Yeah. That was the only one? AJ that was Lester? the only one. Yeah. Then we caught you with a mock neck, and we looked inside, and it didn't have the A.J. <laughs> Lester in him like that. Yeah. So y'all was bringing Harlem style to the Bronx? Right, right. We yeah. were because the gangsters of Harlem. Now, you got to remember, in Harlem, even the only people that was making money mm -hmm. was the gangsters. Right. Regular Harlem people wasn't making the dough. Okay. So the gangsters of Harlem, they the ones that was going to A.J. Lester, going to Layton's and stuff like that. They was the ones that was doing it. Not everybody, just the gangsters. Mm. So they took that style from the gangsters of Harlem and brought it up here. And it became, I guess, hip hop, right? And it became hip hop. Be you get snapped on in a minute, you come downstairs looking right. But let's keep it real, like as far as the dress code, you say the bikes, Maybe Harlem had some of this stuff? They had the clothes. They had the clothes. They had the clothes. But the young people weren't rocking the clothes. The, the young people. gangsters was oh, rocking okay. the clothes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. The gangsters right, rocking right. the clothes. But right. the young Bronx kids was rocking it. We was right. rocking the clothes that the gangsters was rocking in Harlem. Okay, right, and it became hip hop. Then it became by rock. you carrying over that style. Right, the young teenagers, preteens. Right, it became hip hop. Right, right. okay. But if it wasn't for the Bronx, this rap sh probably never would be going on. So tell me where you from? Uptown, baby.